Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by J.C. Lambros and Danielle D'Angelo, once Radio City Music Hall Rockets, now co-founders of the fitness brand Jane Do. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for, Thanks for having us. us. Let's go beyond the mic. Jane Do is a woman's fitness brand on a mission to bring women together with the power of feel-good workouts. Now, how did you ladies meet back in 2008? So we actually met Dancing for the Radio City Rockettes, which we did for a combined 17 years. And we shared a dressing room. So unless you're around the same height order or you share a dressing room, you don't necessarily see all the girls or become close friends with all the girls in the Rockette cast because there are 40 girls in each line. (laughs) And Danielle, what was your first thoughts when you met (laughs) JC? Thank goodness I'm prettier than she is. Otherwise, we'd be in some serious competition. <laughs> no, I knew it was going to be a match made in heaven. You know, when, when, you, when you're a Radio City Rockhead, there is no substitution for hard work, right? Because you work your entire life to get on that great stage. And what we learned at our time at Radio City is that there's so much power in a group of women coming together. So JC and I... When we finally hung up our dancing shoes, we took our passion for dance, our love for fitness, and we created our own methodology and fitness brand, Jane Do. Well, six shows a day, six days a week, the grind of being a professional dancer is just totally rigorous. Yes, not as rigorous as pivoting your business in 24 hours due to COVID, but very close. (laughs) Well, when you were younger, what did you guys want to be? Danny always wanted to be a Rockette, didn't you, Dan? Yeah, I did. My mother um, told me I had to. She should have sort of put it in the universe based on all the money that she was spending on my dance classes. But being a Jersey girl, I always like to say JC and I are two Jersey girls, but she's actually from upstate New York. But being born in New Jersey, my parents used to bring my brother, my sister, and myself and extended family to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade every single year. So I was fortunate enough to grow up with the Rockettes. It is a wonderful brand to work for. JC and I still got those eye high kicks, which you can often see on our live stream doing some of our workouts. And JC? I always have had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I knew I was going to work for myself. And I've always had a crazy love for fitness. So I think I'm doing exactly what I was meant to do. It's what I always anticipated doing. So I'm right where I need to be. You have done some amazing things. Fit and Feast during the New York City Wine and Food Fest, Dancing in the Stars, NBA All-Star Team, commercials for Apple, Macy's, (laughs) and the Radio City Rockets. You both have incredible experiences to talk about. What was that first experience for each of you that made you go, Oh, wow. I I can do this. You know, it's so funny. When I got the call that I was going to be a Radio City Rocket, I was actually driving home from Walmart with my mother. (laughs) And I called my, as soon as I hung up with Radio City, I called my dad and I put him on speaker with my mom. He said, you know what, Jace? There's the Mets, the Yankees, the Jets, and the Radio City Rockets. And for me, that was that was the best feeling hearing, you know, my father, my parents who worked so hard to put me through dance, hearing them be so proud of me was probably the best feeling and that moment for me. Yeah, I have to say the same thing. My, I was with my mother. We were both going, she was taking me to the DMV. I was 19 when I first booked my job. So I guess she still didn't trust me driving when I was 19 taking me there. But I remember my very first time I came out on that stage and you look out in that audience and you hear you know, the thunderous applause and you're part of a legacy, you know, just tears. It's an overwhelming experience. Now, did you ladies have any business experience before you started Jane Do? This is JC speaking. I personally did not have any business experience, but I had worked for a lot of other people and I knew I could run a business better. (laughs) <laughs> and I do have a degree in business and let me tell you do not waste your money because it does not prepare you for all the toilets you're going to have to plunge when you are self-funded and you have five studios with a lot of people coming through the doors I prior to doing what JC and I are doing after Radio City sold real estate and also bought and invested in real estate so I was a landlord a property manager yeah running that business Well, from that initial idea to the actual first class, how long did that take? So I, this is JC, I spent a year developing a business plan. My best friend, Sarah, her husband volunteered his time as my consultant. And once I had the plan finished, I knew I needed a partner. 
and I heard Danny was moving back to Jersey City. I knew from our friendship that we had opposite strengths and opposite personalities. And I thought, and I was right, <laughs> that we would make the perfect pair. Yeah, despite being the yin to the yang and having the opposites, we both have very similar work ethics that were instilled in us at a very young age from our mothers. JC's mother was a telephone operator, my mother a waitress, and like we said earlier, no substitute for hard work. That voice was Danielle D'Angelo. The other one is J.C. Lambros. They are the co-founders of the fitness brand Jane Do Beyond the Mic. Now, everything wasn't easy. Talk to us about the adversity that you ladies faced during the beginning of forming Jane Do. Yeah, so that first, J.C. sort of took us through the business plan. That first, and she actually wrote the business plan based on, because you have to pick a sort of, you know, a property to run all your figures on all your numbers on based on the square footage and figure out your insurance and your figures and run your pro forma. And she actually picked the exact location that we ended up signing a lease for. So we signed our lease and we first walked in and quickly realized that there were structural issues with the roof. And I used to take the broom and bang it up and it was like chicken little, the sky is falling (laughs) to prove to our landlord. Uh huh. And our unfortunately, or fortunately for us, unfortunately for our landlord, they had to redo a lot of the space. But that meant that we had to get creative. So we were hosting pop ups. We were doing outdoor classes, trying to really immerse ourselves into the community. We our first location was in Jersey City. We quit our job six weeks after we I presented the business plan, and it wasn't until or eight months later that we finally opened our doors because of that structural damage. Yeah, that's so, true. As we're in the middle of this pandemic, you've dealt with the challenge of no person classes and you have evolved. You've launched online opportunities. Yeah. So we're on a mission to create the largest community of the most powerful women and nothing's going to stand in our way, not COVID, nothing. And we already have such a powerful community. So our main goal was to keep our community as healthy as can be. Right. Our best defense against this thing right now is our health. So we got really creative very quickly. We're also the scrappiest broads you'll ever meet. And we transitioned into a live stream studio within 24 hours. Danny, you've also launched kids classes. Why was kids classes important for you uh, to launch? You know, so many of our Janes were wearing so many hats. They were not only the caregivers, they very quickly became the teachers. They were having to keep their kids entertained and keep them moving. So we created Jane the Fox, who was stuck in the box, and we wanted to keep our Jane Doolittles um, as active as possible. Again, because like JC said, our best defense against this thing is our health. And we also wanted to make sure that mamas out there had just a few minutes for themselves. Well, JC, you are an incredible aunt, and there's pictures all over the place talking about you loving on on your nieces and nephews. <laughs> Talk about how important your niece and nephew are to you. I mean, family first. Danny and I have, in our partnership, established our priorities, and family comes before all else. Family comes first, and then our friendship, and then the business. And knowing your priorities and being able to structure our lives around that has really helped facilitate our best partnership because our morals are the same. Everything we do is so that we can spend more time with our family and hopefully be able to give back to our family the things that they've given to us. Okay, Danielle, of the following, a rocket, fitness guru, and realtor, rank them from least hard to most hard. (laughs) Least hard to most hard. I would say realtor, least hard, rocket, and then fitness guru. And I'm just going to expand. Fitness guru is, you know, being an entrepreneur and building your own business and brand. Talk to us about the community of the Janes. Talk about how special these women are for you. Yeah, so our... We always call our Janes upon their first class with us, Jane the Virgins. (laughs) And, you know, we watch our Janes build strength in the studio and then use that strength to do incredible things, right? So for us, it's not about inches or pounds. It's how do you feel after you finish one of your workouts? How do you feel when you leave? Or we we may not be leaving the gym right now, but 
our James are using the confidence they're building through the strength they're gaining to run marathons, to ask for raises, to rock laundry for their husbands for the first time, watching that evolution and that gain that our James are achieving is so incredibly powerful. And it's what keeps Danny and I motivated and accountable and keeps us yearning to continue to build the largest community. Most powerful women. Danielle, you know, I mean, JC said it best. What's, What's been incredible is the responses that we're not just getting from our Janes, but also the Jane dudes in their lives. Because hearing something not just from the person that's experiencing the class, but seeing the physical transformation and emotional transformation, and that's in confidence and inner strength, emotional strength, reflected in people's life outside the studio. So hearing those emails, getting the text messages saying, thank you so much. You have changed this person that I care so much about because they're so much stronger is what keeps us going. Danielle, what motivates you every day? You know, we're, because we are a purpose driven brand, it really is to build the largest community, the most powerful women. And that's not just physical strength. You also need financial confidence, you need sexual confidence. And right now we are starting to build our ecosystem and go into different facets of female empowerment. So I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg of where we want to take this brand and where we see this brand going. So like JC said earlier, nothing is going to stop us from getting there. We have a lot more to do. Okay, JC, what motivates you? I think exactly what Danny said. And just to add to that I think Danny and I really motivate each other we constantly challenge each other we continuously set new goals so I think having Danielle as an accountability partner but then having our community also as the greatest accountability partners because they're craving more and they have a certain expectation from us so the idea that we can continue to provide them different facets of empowerment and more tools to become more powerful makes me want to be better and do better every day. Did you have to furlough any employees during this quarantine and and talk about the emotions that you both had? And JC, you can go first. I mean, the emotions about how, you know, they're part of your family, but it's just financially not available for you to keep them on right now. Yeah, pre-COVID, we had approximately 65 employees and having to furlough, you know, everybody initially was, you know, tragic for us. They are our family. They are, you know, all my Jane Do crew, we are a team. So that was probably the most difficult day that we've had thus far. We were able to bring back our management team and being able to have those, you know, there's seven girls that have been back with us since, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about March 30th. Yeah. Having that team united has allowed us to, you know, sustain our business. And, you know, I've never seen any group of women work harder together. Well, at least not since we did the Rockettes. Yeah, before even furloughing, I think there was just this state of fear across the board when you when you don't know what to expect. And, of course, when you start hearing that not just gyms, but a across all platforms, stores are closing, restaurants are closing, not knowing, not having the answers. We normally can do a self check and deal with your emotions. It was a very scary time for us. And then having to have that conversation personally, send out the emails and tell your team that you are going to have to furlough them and you don't know when you're going to be able to come back. It feels, it is like JC said, the single hardest day that we have had to date because we still don't have the answers. And this is nothing that we did. You worked so hard to build a community, to build a business, to build a brand. And, you know, some days you do hit roadblocks, but you have to get creative and you have to keep moving. So we always say, you know, you can live in it for a little bit, but then find a solution. How important was exercising for your own sanity after everything going on? To say how important is exercising, we, you know, took it to an extreme level because at first Danny and I were teaching just about every single class and we were teaching it from my garage. So on a cement floor, it reminded me of dancing back at Radio City on the steel stage because you feel every step you take resonate in your hip bones and in every joint. So exercise is so great for the endorphin surge. For us, we, we ended up reaching our breaking point where physically 
we couldn't teach another class. And that's the point at which we had to decide whether or not we brought on a whole management team. And, you know, we started with three people and then we gradually have been adding more and more of our team to the schedule. You build everything up. And in that moment, when we heard we had to close that, and I spoke about it earlier, that fear of feeling like you're going to lose everything, everyone, your relationships. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen for us because we did turn the studio into a garage studio. We were able to continue working out, which not only kept us sane, but kept our community sane. Everyone's like, if we didn't have you. And what the, the benefit also to what we're doing right now is we have a chat feature on our live stream classes. So we hope that the people tuning in can take class with us because you could take with JC and myself. And we have had the opportunity to get to know our Janes on a more personal, intimate level than we ever have. Because when you're in a traditional in-studio class, right, you have the instructor on the headset and you're teaching. And after class, there's normally only a few minutes in between and then everyone goes on their way. But here we're getting to hear about people's personal lives, what their kids are doing, you know, who's crawling on their back as they're doing push-ups, or what books they're reading or where they're going after for the weekend or who else they're working out with. So we really didn't have to feel that low. But to answer your question, they, our community is what are keeping JC and myself sane and our whole crew. Danielle, how important was changing just one woman's image of herself positively. It's everything. That is the motivation every single day. And we see that transformation. Sometimes it happens within the course of a class, someone coming in for the first time and Jane the Virgin. And by the time they walk out, they have tears rolling down their face because they say, you know what? I haven't danced like that since I was a little girl. It feels so good for me to be able to express myself, for me to feel like I can just let my hair down in a judgment-free zone and sweat or dance or let it all go. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. It could take a year to see the transformation. But when that moment happens, there is nothing that's going to stop that woman from achieving other goals. And like we said, our goal is for you to find your strength inside the studio or now inside your home or on the beach or wherever you're working out with us and take it outside into the real world. Because what you do with your strength is where it really counts. And we, we hear the stories, we see them, and that's what keeps us going. JC? <laughs> She's a hard act to follow. Well, I think in order for any woman to be consistent, they have to enjoy what they're doing. And they can't feel a sense of judgment. They have to feel a sense of inclusivity. And what we've been able to foster is a very safe haven where we focus on the gains and not the losses. You know, we have this thing where we always talk about flipping the script. And as often as we can, even when we're, you know, down in the trenches, we try to make the negative a positive. And we try to instill that in our community. And everything we do is about gaining confidence, gaining strength. And the less you can talk about the vanity aspects of it, the more powerful any woman will feel. Well, time's running out, so it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions answered with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Since we have two guests, JC will answer first. <laughs> Here we go. The Rocking Eight. Good luck. Favorite travel destination? Ah, oh, Greece. Danielle? Oh, Greece, hands down. Santorini. Woo! Favorite and least favorite Workout exercises. My wife is screaming, plank, <laughs> plank. I hate bikes. I hate cycling. I can't do it. It's too monotonous for me. My favorite is our tramp stamp class. We have a mini rebounder. It's a small trampoline class. And it is so much fun. My favorite is anything 80s, rocking out with hot pink lipstick and a scrunchie, just dancing around, and then working booty, booty work. I hate all lower body stuff. Yuck, 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 yuck. Yay, booty work. <laughs> what's your favorite way to relax after a long week i love to have a glass or a bottle of wine with my jane dude anthony yeah mine's tequila with my jane dude tyler oh tequila you evil evil <laughs> evil, evil. <laughs> favorite cheat day meal oh we do not hold back ever we believe that <laughs> you should order the fries maybe just share them so my favorite cheat day meal Every day is probably pizza and a ch or a cheeseburger with French fries, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine is cheese fries and gravy. Mozzarella cheese and actual gravy, not red gravy. Yes. Thank you, my New Yorker. Ah, uh, yes. This whole fries, so good. Any day of the week, any diner, that's what I want. 
the the New Yorker, the New York, New Jersey accent just came out on Danielle right there. Okay, <laughs> Danielle, been your business partner for years, but there has to be one thing that drives you absolutely nuts about her. JC, what's the one pet peeve you have about Danielle? I swear I don't have one. Come on. Her legs will always be longer and she'll always be two years younger. That's it. <laughs> The truth always comes out in the Rocky and Eight. Danielle, what yeah. about JC? You know, JC is literally the nicest human I have ever met. And sometimes life would be a lot easier if she would take some of the tougher <laughs> conversations. <laughs> so, in other words, what you're saying, what you're saying is, is she always gets to play good cop, and you always get to play bad cop. I always get to play bad cop. Correct. <laughs> But she volunteers. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I like the role. I do like the role. <laughs> okay. JC, what activities were you involved in in high school? <laughs> I swear. All, <laughs> um, the prom club. Danny and I are going to have the same answer that we literally danced from the minute we left school till, you know, 9 or 10 p.m. till our parents dragged us home from the studio. Yeah, there's no time for anything else. Nope, musical theater, dance, and then if I had a free moment, it was with my boyfriend, Gary Papa. Gary Papa. (laughs) Okay, if you could tell your eight-year-old self something, what would it be, JC? I just, I know Danny's, and it's already making me laugh. Tell him yours first, Dan. Mine is to stop plucking your eyebrows. (laughs) Just stop. (laughs) Hey, JC. So, I would say dance with your dad every time he asks you to. I just wish that I was not so shy, and I wish I took the opportunity to dance with him much as I could. One thing that people don't know about you, JC. Hmm. Huh. Maybe that I love to cook. What, what's your favorite meal to cook, then? Anything Greek. Anything Greek. Pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Danielle, what about you? One thing that people may not know is that I love to read. And we just finished, JC and I both just finished The Dutch House. And because we had so much great response when we were discussing the book on our live stream, we're going to start our own book club. So if you want to join us in August, tune in for live stream classes. And the next book we're reading is Untamed. Ladies, where can people find you online? So you can find us at janedo.com slash live stream, or you can download our Jane Do On Demand app. That's Jane Do On Demand in the App Store or on Google Play. They want to empower women to do great things. Got the big call at the DMV and Walmart and love pizza and cheese fries with gravy for their cheat day meal. JC Lambros, Daniel D'Angelo, co-founders of Jdo. Best of luck to you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much. So much fun. You're fantastic. That was the most fun interview we had. It was the most fun. Sean, thank you so much. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic. 